Namsul University, College English Two, Pre-Learning, Unit Ten, Add an Interview, Vocabulary, Resume, Summary of Education, Work Experience, Skills and Achievements, Resume, Cover Letter, Letter accompanying a resume. Highlighting qualifications and expressing interest. Cover letter. Interview. Formal meeting to assess qualifications and suitability for a position. Interview. Candidate. Person being considered for a job or position. Candidate. Qualifications. Skills, knowledge, experience, or characteristics for a job or position. Qualifications. References. Individuals vouching for character, skills, and work ethic. References. Teamwork. Collaborative effort towards a common goal. Teamwork. Strengths. Personal attributes, skills, or qualities that give an advantage. Strengths. Weaknesses. Areas with limitations or room for improvement. Weaknesses. Time management. Effective organization and prioritization of tasks. Time management. Adaptability. Ability to adjust to new circumstances or challenges. Adaptability. Non-profit organization. Organization operating for social or charitable purposes. Non-profit organization. Application form. Document collecting candidate information for a position. Application form. Volunteer experience. Previous involvement in unpaid activities. Volunteer experience. Commitment. Willingness to fulfill responsibilities regularly. Commitment. Networking. Building connections for information and opportunities. Networking. Interviewer. Person or panel conducting the volunteer interview. Interviewer. Professional development. Activities enhancing skills for career advancement. Professional development. Motivation. Reasons driving the candidate's interest. Motivation. Dress code. Expected attire for a specific setting, like an interview. Dress code. Unit ten. At an interview. Grammar. Future tense. Definition. The future tense is used to describe actions or events that will happen after the present moment. It's used to talk about things that are planned, predicted, or expected to occur in the future. Examples: I will visit my grandparents next weekend. She's going to start a new job next month. They will travel to Europe next year. We are having a party tomorrow evening. The concert begins at 8 p.m. tonight. Future tense using will. Future tense with the auxiliary verb will is one used for predictions. It will snow tomorrow. She won't win the election. Two used for scheduled events. The concert will begin at eight o'clock. When will the train leave? Three, used for promises. 
Will you marry me? I'll help you with your homework after class. 4. Used for offers. I'll make you a sandwich. They'll help you if you want. 5. Used in combination with time clauses. As soon as, when, before, after. He will call as soon as he arrives. Will you visit me when you come next week? Future tense using be going to. 1. The future tense with going to is used to express planned events or intentions. These events or intentions are decided on before the moment of speaking. Frank is going to study medicine. Where are they going to stay when they come? She isn't going to buy the new house after all. Note, going to should be used for distant future intentions. Example, he's going to study law. 2. Used for future predictions based on physical, usually visual, evidence. Oh no! Look at those clouds! It's gonna rain! Be careful, you're going to drop those dishes! Future tense, using present tenses. The present continuous tense is used for planned or personally scheduled events. Usually used with verbs such as come, go, begin, start, finish, have, etc. He's coming tomorrow afternoon. What are we having for dinner? I'm not seeing the doctor until Friday. The simple present tense is used for something scheduled. We have a lesson next Monday. The train arrives at 6.30 in the morning. The holidays start next week. It's my birthday tomorrow. Direct and reported speech. Definitions. Direct speech, also known as quoted speech, is when we convey someone's exact words or speech by using quotation marks. Reported speech, also known as indirect speech, is when we convey someone's words or speech by paraphrasing or summarizing without using quotation marks. Pronoun and tense changes. When transforming direct speech into reported speech, we may need to change pronouns, for example, from I to he or she, and verb tenses to reflect the change in perspective and time. Example, she said, I have finished my work. She said that she had finished her work. Quoted speech, direct speech the actual words a person says inside quotation marks. Reported speech, indirect speech, telling what a person said, no quotation marks. Simple present, simple past. Present continuous, past continuous. Present perfect, past perfect. Simple past, past perfect. Present perfect continuous. Past perfect continuous. Shall, should. Will, would. May, might. Can, could. Must, had to. Note, would, should, ought to, had better, might, used to, could. These do not change in reported speech. Other changes in reported speech. This, that. These, those. Today, that day. Yesterday, the day before. Now, then. Tomorrow, the next day, the following day. The day before yesterday. Two days before. The day after tomorrow. Two days later in two days time. Next week. The following week. Last week, the previous week. Changing direct into reported speech. 
As a rule, when you report direct speech, you go back a tense. Direct speech, indirect speech. Present simple, past simple. She said it's cold. She said it was cold. Present continuous, past continuous. She said, I'm teaching English online. She said she was teaching English online. Present perfect simple, past perfect simple. She said, I've been on the web since 1999. She said she'd been on the web since 1999. Present perfect continuous, past perfect continuous. She said, I've been running for seven years. She said she'd been running for seven years. Past simple, past perfect. She said, I studied online yesterday. She said she had studied online yesterday. Past continuous, past perfect continuous. She said, I was shopping earlier. She said she'd been shopping earlier. Past perfect, past perfect. She said, the lesson had already started when he arrived. She said the lesson had already started when he arrived. No change. Past perfect continuous, past perfect continuous. She said, I'd already been running for five minutes. She said she'd already been running for five minutes. No change. Unit 10. At an interview. Reading. First, watch the video and listen to the reading. Second, watch the video and read along with the words on the screen. Sharon had been eagerly preparing for an important job interview. She had meticulously crafted her resume and cover letter, ensuring they highlighted her skills and qualifications for the position. On the day of the interview, Sharon entered the company's office feeling a mix of nervousness and excitement. The interviewer, Mr. Johnson, greeted her with a warm smile and led her into the meeting room. Sharon expressed her enthusiasm for the role and how she believed her skills and experience aligned perfectly with the company's vision. Then, Mr. Johnson asked her to share a time when she had demonstrated strong teamwork skills. Sharon provided an example from her previous role, explaining how she collaborated with a diverse team to successfully launch a new product. Impressed with the response, Mr. Johnson asked Sharon how she planned to contribute to the company if selected for the role. Sharon outlined her intentions to use her expertise, drive innovation, and deliver exceptional results. She emphasized her commitment to continuous improvement and staying updated with industry trends. After a series of insightful questions and thoughtful answers, the interview concluded. Sharon left the office feeling hopeful and eagerly anticipating the company's decision. Finally, Sharon received an email notifying her that she had been selected for the position. She felt a surge of joy and excitement as she realized that her future was about to take a remarkable turn. Sharon had been eagerly preparing for an important job interview. She had meticulously crafted her resume and cover letter, ensuring they highlighted her skills and qualifications for the position. On the day of the interview, Sharon entered the company's office feeling a mix of nervousness and excitement. The interviewer, Mr. Johnson, greeted her with a warm smile and led her into the meeting room. Sharon expressed her enthusiasm for the role and how she believed her skills and experience aligned perfectly with the company's vision. Then, Mr. Johnson asked her to share a time when she had demonstrated strong teamwork skills. Sharon provided an example from her previous role, explaining how she collaborated with a diverse team to successfully launch a new product. Impressed with the response, Mr. Johnson asked Sharon how she planned to contribute to the company if selected for the role. Sharon outlined her intentions to use her expertise, drive innovation, and deliver exceptional results. 
she emphasized her commitment to continuous improvement and staying updated with industry trends. After a series of insightful questions and thoughtful answers, the interview concluded. Sharon left the office feeling hopeful and eagerly anticipating the company's decision. Finally, Sharon received an email notifying her that she had been selected for the position. She felt a surge of joy and excitement as she realized that her future was about to take a remarkable turn. Unit 10. At an interview. Reading exercises. 1. What did Sharon do to prepare for the job interview? A. She crafted a compelling resume and cover letter. B. She met with Mr. Johnson beforehand. C. She skipped preparing and went directly to the interview. Two, how did Sharon feel on the day of the interview? A, bored. B, nervous and excited. C, confident. Three, what did Mr. Johnson ask Sharon about her teamwork skills? A, to share a personal story unrelated to teamwork. B, to provide an example of strong collaboration. C, to explain her solo achievements. Four, how did Sharon plan to contribute to the company if selected for the role? A, by doing the bare minimum required of her. B, by using her expertise to drive innovation. C, by focusing solely on her personal growth. <laughs> 